Greetings. I tried to do a live stream earlier. It's buffering too much. So here I am on this. I have some distinct things to say today. If you don't know who I am, I'm Suzanne Titkemeyer. I um, used to write for Patheos. I wrote a column for almost 10 years called No Longer Quivering, where I examined the quiverful movement, the evangelical Christianity world, the toxic things, not the things that... Uh, not the things that weren't toxic, but some of the beliefs that are just out there in both the <clears throat> in both the uh, fundamentalist and regular evangelical world. Okay, do all the YouTube things, please. I would really appreciate it if you hit like, subscribe, whatever. Um, I would really appreciate that. Thank you for joining me. I also wanted to say, just like Renell Smith, research what I'm saying. Research it and form your own conclusions. These are just my opinions, how I'm viewing it after so many years in the Quiverful movement and now out of the movement, this is where I am. Don't bully anybody I talk about at all, ever, 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 ever. We need to not be rude. We need to be, what was it that Michelle Obama said? When they go low, we go high. I'm a big believer in that. And I have to talk about that a little bit at the end because we have had the reappearance of the world's biggest troll. And I'm putting that out there so that everybody knows that that troll is out there and we need to just pay her zero attention. Unless you enjoy getting corn in your emails. Someone might. So anyway, I want today, I want to talk to Josh Duggar and not just Josh, but a lot of his supporters, fans, family, friends, the whole nine yards. Over the last couple of days, not only have we seen the release of documents having to do with his sisters and what happened when they tried to sue, we have seen letters released. Letters to the judge from family and friends begging, begging the, um, federal judge, to go easy on Josh, not to give him the full sentence. I think I read that the judge has the option of doing 20 years plus five or six for each account. I'm not really sure. But what I'm reading is that the um, 20 years is likely to be what he's going to get. I don't know. I haven't kept up with the laws on any of that. I'm not Emily D. Baker, who I happen to love. I think she's excellent. She would know. And I think she was saying 20 years and maybe an additional five for the counts. I don't know. Yeah, I've been too busy to watch her lately and watch too many other people. And I've just been rambling about what I think. Okay, so dear Josh, dear Josh's family and friends writing these letters. Why can't you admit that what Josh did was wrong? Why can't you admit that? Why all of this sudden, he's a good family man and his children need him, so don't give him time. What Josh did was, is one of those crimes that's almost unforgivable. There are consequences, even among prisoners, honor among thieves for these guys that do these awful things. They are considered the lowest of the low, the scummiest of the scum. Josh, you have said that you didn't download that stuff. You didn't know about how to partition a hard drive, any of that. And the evidence has shown that that's a lie, that you have lied on the stand. You've lied to the investigators. You asked them if they were coming because of child corn. When they showed up to investigate initially, why would you even say that? Why? Yeah, bean bump. They keep talking about Josh, the family man, how great he is with the kids. See no evidence of that. The show doesn't show that. Even his mother's ridiculous letter with the, her eye dotted with a little heart like she's a 12-year-old writing a, a letter to writing a letter to whoever the newest teen sensation is. I know that Justin Bieber is no longer so. It just struck me as the kind of writing that you see teen girls do. 
her, David Waller, and so many other letters, they emphasize Josh being taken away from his kids. Well, guess what? When you commit those kind of crimes, when you are downloading the worst child porn film ever made, and he would have had to have openly, actively downloaded it and probably even pay the fee for that thing because at one point they were charging $10,000 to download it and view it. Which is silly because some of the um, Duggar things talk about how great Josh is with money, how responsible. I beg to differ. $10,000 a film... It wasn't stated where, whether he actually did pay that money or not, but corn ain't free. I'm just going to say corn ain't free. Corn is only free at places like P-O-R-N hub, corn hub. And even then, they have a paywall, is my understanding. I'm not a corn consumer, so corn, cornstarch, all of that is just off limits. But here's what I wanted to talk about today. During the time I worked at a children's residential treatment center, we had a number of children there who had been used in the production of child corn. <sighs> We're talking kids as young as three to seven, eight years old. Do you have any idea of what it's like for these kids as they try to recover. If you had any idea what it was like for these little kids, there is, it would just break your heart. You would not write a letter supporting anybody. These kids where I worked got therapy, lots and lots of therapy as a matter of fact, and it was still hard. Some of the most heartbreaking moments in my work world were accompanying some of these young charges when they went to testify against their abusers. There are real victims in this thing. This is not a crime that came with no victims. Every man that downloads and views that kind of child corn is as guilty as those who actually do the RAP ING. Just as guilty. Even with therapy, even with psychiatric drugs, even in a controlled therapeutic environment, these kids don't have much of a shot. They carry the shame of what happened to them with them for the rest of their life. It wrecks relationships. Many of them go on to have unhealthy relationships. It's difficult to trust anybody. You walk around all the time with a hyper-awareness. Hyper-awareness all the time. And it, re it wrecks your life. Those of us that were abused as children, we have that, that, that hyper-awareness. And it does, some, it does some really damaging things to yourself and to everyone around you. And it makes you not trust. These are lifelong things. And Michelle, I know you're just going to excuse it and say, well, um, those kids just need Jesus. They just need Jesus so badly. Well, little Jesus couldn't hurt. That's not what they need most. Oh, how I wish that life was like a Law and Order SVU episode. Because if it was, every guy like Josh that downloads this stuff would end up in court and having to pay a huge, huge amount of money to the children that were used in these productions. Law and Order had an episode like that where they found this lady who had neglected her child to go to serve her time in, in her weekend time in jail. And it came out the girl had been used for years in child corn. And they helped her get justice against all the men that were downloading and sharing the child corn that she had started and that was still 20 years later being shared. 
and they got financial judgments against all of them. If only real life worked like that. I would like to see Josh lose every penny in his name to these children, these children with wrecked lives that are never going to be able to get past that. This is one of those soul-destroying, damaging things that I think very few people manage to surmount. It's just too much. When you're a child, you look to adults to protect you. And being forced into corn performance is the ultimate in non-protection. It's the ultimate in betrayal. And as some of the children used in that particular film that Josh downloaded, which is one of the most notorious, I'm not even going to name it, because to name this thing is to give too much information. But that, there was a part of the film, my understanding, I'm not seeing it, that was a snuff film, that they killed one of the little girls in the film. And that is just the most sick and twisted. Even though I will say maybe that's more merciful because that's now a child that won't have to live through that any longer. That won't have to live every single day knowing that, that new debased photos of them video of them being abused is circulating online. And that is what this all boils down to for me. Now, I'm not surprised by some of the people that have written supporting letters to Josh's judge. David Waller was one of them. It is alleged that David Waller himself, the fabulous David Waller, married to Priscilla, sister of Anne, um, Anna Duggar, I should say. <sighs> he once worked for ATII BLP with Bill Gothard. And there are some of the teenage girls that were abused by Bill Gothard that have alleged that David Waller watched and did nothing. He did nothing to stop the old creep. So here you have somebody that is a sexual abuser by proximity even if he can't really be charged, and I'm sure he's going to claim that's not what he is, but if you sit and you watch somebody grooming a teenage girl for those things, yes, you were complicit. You were just as complicit as those people that are watching the corn over and over again. Staying silent is being complicit. So all of you out there trying to shut down Josh being punished, shame on you. Shame on you. You were sick, sick individuals. And I'm not sure that I could ever have the mercy to grant any of you anything. It is just too much. So that's all I had to say about Josh today. This is sick. This is twisted. Let him face the consequences of his actions. In the description, I'm going to put the address to the judge in this case, where we can write letters to say, I do not believe that Josh Duggar should be shown any mercy and should do every moment of 20 years. I am preparing to write one of those myself right now. Why? Because this is, this is just too important. It's too important. Josh has slid with no punishment for years for all of the things that are, he's done. Every week I hear more and more about what he's done. I knew back before it ever came out about his sisters because I've been part of a quiverful church for a long, long time. And there was quite a lot of prayer that went around about about uh, the family and saying, you know, please pray for them. They're trying to get this TLC show. They're trying to get a show. They're having problems with their eldest acting out and they need prayer to keep on and to heal the son. And like I said, I'm 99.99% .99 sure that that was the Duggar family they were talking about because no names are given on these prayer lists that I would see. Okay, so now I have to do a little housekeeping.
I don't really want to do housekeeping. I will do the minimum I got to do around here to keep things relatively clean or in my bedroom immaculate. Okay. I said earlier in the week that I thought that the Duggar girls depositions, the deposition of the Holt girl should have been, should not have been read and discussed so, so openly. I need to quantify that because I think that down the rabbit hole at bedtime, maybe you didn't quite understand what I was talking about. Maybe I didn't explain it very well. It's very likely because I'm kind of all over the place and I'm so highly triggered at this moment because of that and because I'm, I've reached the part in my book where I'm writing about my daughter going to all these teen mania events, going on two teen mania mission trips and all the things that happened and then were bad. There were things that happened that I found about about years later that were just astounding. And Ron Luce is at it again. He's got a new organization where he's trying to raise money instead of doing it the militant C-U-L-T way that he was doing with Teen Mania, Global Expeditions, and Acquire the Fire. Now he's got his new thing. So I'm re-researching all of this, refreshing my memory, and it's just making me jumpy. So when I went off the other day and said we weren't supposed to discuss this stuff, I need to put a qualifier in there. Okay. I was referring to, without a crystal ball, Katie Joy, reading the documents aloud, reading the depositions on her channel. And I was referring to all of those in the anti-KJ community that were using that were using this as fodder. And it wasn't like, oh, KJ did this, it was horrible. It was KJ did this, this is horrible. And now we're gonna read you the document. And that's what I have a problem with. But I didn't say at the time, if you've come out of that type of environment, if you've come out of quiverful if you've come out of these problematic churches that connect themselves with the ATI IBLP if you're suffering from spiritual abuse and you are seeking you are seeking to heal guess what I think that there is a different standard for that I think if you are struggling with this and you're struggling to recover and try to warn people it's a whole different ball game discussing what was in the documents. It might be part of your healing path. It's not for me. It's not my thing. And I've said my piece about why it's not a thing for me, why it's not a good thing, besides the fact that it would be horribly triggering to me. So um, I don't have any problem with those, like I said, who are in recovery from Quiverful and from the different churches reading these things aloud and discussing them. It's part of their journey. It's part of their journey out. And that includes you too, um, down the rabbit hole of bedtime. I love your videos. I think you're doing a really great job. I'm going to link to your videos below. You did one earlier that I watched about this whole, these, le these letters. And you pointed out something very, very, very important. And all the letters that are being written to the judge explaining all of this, and saying, Josh needs to get the minimum so that he can see his children. Um, Jim Bob Duggar did not write one. That ought to tell you a lot right there. He did not write one of those letters. And I can't, I can't understand what his thinking is on that because while I'm not going to beat up Michelle for writing one of these letters, as a mother... As a father, you want what you think is best for your child, and that may not line up with what is actually realistically best for your child. What is best for Josh at this point is a nice long stint in a federal prison like the one at Phoenix where they actually have a special dedicated SA unit where they put all these guys together to keep them alive, to keep them from being shanked by a prisoner in regular jail. I think that's where he needs to be. He's proven time and time again he's a predator. So down the rabbit hole at bedtime, go ahead and discuss as you like. 
this would be a boring world if we agreed on every single thing. And there are people that I agree, I support that I don't agree with about much of anything. This morning I came on Twitter. This is the last bit of housekeeping. I came on Twitter just in time to see everybody and their brother fighting about the reappearance of Natalie Kennett. Nat. Let's explain who Nat is because I know I have viewers that are not familiar with Nat. Nat Kennett, Natalie Kennett, inserted herself into KJ's trial with, well, her lawsuit from Tati Westbrook to her, where Tati was trying to get evidence, evidence yeah, against her former partner, Clark Swanson. Clark Swanson had contacted Katie and given her a lot of information that turned out not to be quite so true. Tati sued her defamation of character to get to Swanson. Pretty smart. Natalie Kennett, who no one knew, Nat, nobody knew Nat at all. We'd never seen her anywhere in the community, gave a deposition to Michael Saltz. Michael Saltz was... Tati Westbrook's lawyer, okay? She gave him a deposition. She somehow hornswoggled him and his entire staff into thinking she was somehow involved with without a crystal ball. And she gave a statement that was clearly fictitious now, but we know was not real. And then she started hacking, hacking some people Sending other people porn, corn, including CP, and trying to say that they were sending her CP. She sent out multiple, multiple death threats and all kinds of other things were sent out through emails. I myself was signed up to work as a prostitute and I received oodles of emails asking me what my prices were. And it was an awful time because I was getting these things and emailing these guys back and like, so I'm sorry, you have been, you have been, um, you've been fooled. I am not a prostitute. I'm a 60 year old woman. And it was hard because I got cussed out over and over and over and over again. And that's just my story. There are so many others that I know that Nat did and said and accused and threatened all these different things. So my advice to anybody tempted to believe anything coming out of the mouth of Natalie Kennett, don't do it. Put her on block. Don't engage. Don't talk to her. Don't speculate what she's doing. We don't want her to continue her, her crap in the community. We don't. Because she makes things all the more worse. How on earth are we ever going to get convictions of um, not convictions because it's not criminal court findings of guilty and financial restitution on the whole host of cases facing without a crystal ball right now if nat kennett is inserting herself into these things and giving depositions so those of you that are new in the community you need to know nat's been at this a long time and the reason that we know this is because the FBI insults. They, he has been in league with them because Nat Kennett made sure that he was swatted. Thankfully, the police knew him well enough to know that the call that came in was bogus. So they didn't kick in his windows and shoot him, which is what could have happened because that's what she did. She also sent him lots of of anti-semitic emails threatening to kill him or his kids and various things i find that absolutely reprehensible and indefensible and so this is the last time or a long time until i have to explain about this woman again that I will be mentioning her name. I think the most cruel and kindest thing we can do to Natalie Kennett is completely ignore everything she's saying and doing. 
last year she did a live stream on Kay Baxter's live stream uh, account and she was on there with Katie Joy she accused Steve McRae Tina I'll cut you and EKC people suck Aaron of criminal behavior she accused them of actual crimes Kay Baxter let her do it and now Kay Baxter is going around going oh well, I didn't know blah 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 well let's not do this any longer let's just say bless your heart and move on from the Kay Baxter thing and realize that Nat is now trying to do that Nikki Nikki who does not like me who was a road hog moderator she showed it one time in my comments in the middle of the night and posted a bunch of ill-spelled grammatically incorrect posts calling me all kinds of names so this is the Nikki that is now entertaining Nat and Nat is accusing others of criminal behavior why would this be if the FBI knows about Nat simple Nat lives in the United Kingdom she lives she lives in England and her closest law enforcement is the West Mercia station she lives not far from Birmingham Birmingham I think that's how you pronounce it I don't know I haven't been in years to the UK even though I gotta tell you if anybody ever successfully brings her to court maybe I might have to take a take a little visit to jolly old England I actually have friends that live right in that area who've been begging me to come by and visit I have friends in London have been doing the same thing I have friends in Cornwall that have been begging me and I would love to visit Cornwall again and the satisfaction of seeing Natalie be brought up on criminal charges would be awesome the sad thing is the FBI cannot do a damn thing about her it has to originate with the West Mercia police station it has to so if you feel in the run-up to this that Natalie is the one sending you these things you can go on to the West Mercia police website and you can file a report I know many of us have many of us had have, have including the hogs who I'm not going to throw any shade at about doing so because Natalie's things that she does and acts they're scary you know how scary that is when you start getting these things these threats right now there is also a uh, series of messages that Lindsay Chrisley posted between supposedly between Nat and, and Katie Joy and I started looking at them yesterday when they popped up and said this is this is this is fabrication why do I say that because in this version Katie Joy supposed Katie Joy was saying that she had been suffering domestic violence by her husband Todd I don't buy that for a minute there and all the time I knew Katie Joy was talking to her never once did she ever hint that anything remotely like that was going on I've seen no evidence of it it's wrong to accuse somebody of those kind of crimes without proof and Natalie has a reputation for for um, manufacturing evidence for screenshots for text messages that are fake she knows how to do all that the girl is some kind of silly evil genius in her 20s and the sad thing is that she could put this knowledge and this um, skill set for good even with the, the the police I mean there's so much she could be doing better than what she's doing and she's wasting her time doing this she's doing this hours and hours on end and she's doing it again so take everything you see out there with a giant grain of salt do a little investigating when these things pop up when that 
video of the conversation popped up that Lindy Chrisley shared because Lindy Chrisley did not know about Nat. Surely she does now. When that popped up, I was reminded of the infamous Roadhog interview of Julie G, Julie Gagney, who went on to say that Todd had had an, an almost affair with her. And when I was listening to that, just right away, all alarm bells started going off my mind. And I thought, this is not true at all. There are too many enormous holes. And I started taking notes and, and knocking holes and thinking about these things. This is just more of the same. And that's why I am talking about Nat in such detail right now. Because if she has started this Codswallop again, there is no telling where this will lead and who will say and do what. <sighs> it is just, you know, there are days where I think I can't live on this planet anymore. There's just too much pain. There's too much purposeful heartbreak. There's too much cruelty. There are too many people with their heads up their rear ends like, Everyone supporting Josh and demanding he get a two or three year sentence. I can't be on this planet. And one final coda before I log off, going back to Josh, I didn't think about this earlier. If he gets that two or three year sentence they're asking for, he's going to be on the registry for one very long time, if not for the rest of his life. He is going to be on the sexual abusers registry, sexual predators, okay? That means he's very likely not going to be allowed to go back and live with his own children. So putting him in jail for two or three years is only going to make things harder for Anna Duggar when he gets out and his own children. They'll have to maintain two residences. And he won't be allowed unfettered around his children ever again until they're over 18. You know, there's some crimes in the world that when you commit them, you really shouldn't have access to a victim pool ever again. Even if that potential victim pool is your own children, that should never happen again. Okay, you guys, this is my rant. I'm sticking to it. Like I said, research anything I've said if you don't believe what I'm saying. Especially about Natalie. Do a little reading. I, I'm kind of disgusted this morning because I saw people that I know and like that were supporting Natalie. And they were supporting Kay Baxter. Forgetting that what Kay Baxter did by allowing a known and proven liar free access to say what she want. And to spin another, quote, narrative, one of those words I never want to hear again. She was rubber stamping the abuse of others when she, when she did that. And she hasn't apologized to it. And these same people are promoting her and uh, Waxy, True Ball of Wax, who also ran with the narrative that Steve, Aaron, Tina are some kind of evil cabal instead of what they are, which is pretty much innocent victims. Like Steve McRae or hate him, that's fine. That is fine. But when you start trying to make up criminal accusations against somebody with no, no proof at all, and Waxy, I'm calling you out yet again. You said you had, you had proof. You had you had evidence that would stand up in court proof. Show it. Show it or shut the heck up. Okay. This is maybe, I'm, I, could, I bet if I took my blood pressure. And I have the means to do so. That it would be insane high right now. I'm ranting. I'm just kind of done. I'm done. I think I'm going to log off Twitter for quite some time. I'm going to try. I always say I'm going to do that. I'm going to leave Twitter for a while and I never do. Well, considering I'm at a really hard part in my book, maybe it would be best if I just log off of social media until this crazy nonsense passes because I don't have the patience to go through another round of Nat blames everybody under the sun. 
Okay, you guys, I'm sorry I'm ranting. This is usually not me, but this whole thing with Nat has just gotten to me. I um, owe some of you emails. One of the problems I have now since Nat is that anything that comes from an unknown address with my name on it, an email address, my email box, my Gmail routes it to spam and I don't see it unless I go actively looking for it. I try to do that once or twice a month, but I sometimes miss things. So that's that's where we are with this. Try to have a great weekend and try not to let any of this nonsense bother you at all. I think tomorrow I'm going to resume my book reviews because it's something that has always been a passion of mine. I know before when I was doing it, all I did was give negative ones for books written by ridiculous religious people. And I may do a few of those, but I think I'm also going to promote a couple of books that I recently really, really enjoyed, including a historical fiction series that I really got a lot out of, even though it, I'm sure it would not be everybody's cup of tea. And I'm going to discuss why I liked a book by a Republican, me. Left to center me, liked it and enjoyed it and enjoyed his thought processes and was upset that this guy is no longer in Congress. Okay, I'll see you guys later.